Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today's gonna be another episode of Wix Principles where we cover the basics of Wix and web design. For today's video, we're gonna be covering grid lines. If we take a look right here, we can see we have two grid lines right here and right here. And basically what we want to do is make sure that all of our content is put right here in the middle. For example, if I go up to add, go to decorative, and I just pull out this shape real quick, here in the middle, it's gonna look perfectly fine. And when we resize the website, it's always gonna be right where we placed it. However, if we start putting this vector art over here to the left of the grid line, you're gonna see that this area is gray. And if we put it over here on the right, you're gonna see this area is grayed out too. And if we let go and we leave it there, then if we preview the website, it's gonna start disappearing on smaller screen sizes. So if you have really important content and it's not design, then you really, really, really wanna make sure it's in between these grid lines to make sure that on all screen sizes, your user will be able to see it. Now, if you do not see these grid lines, all you have to do is come up to tools and make sure that grid lines is turned on. Now, something else I do wanna show you. So I'm just gonna add another section real quick. We'll make it blank. If we come down to this section, let's say we want to have content over here to the left or the right. What we can do is come up to add and go up to strip. And we'll just pull out this basic strip right here, just like that. And inside the strip, you're gonna notice that we have the same grid lines. So we have grid lines here and here. And if I just copy this vector art and I paste it inside of this strip, you're gonna notice if I move it over here to the left or right, it's gonna be gray. We're not supposed to put content there. Let's say we do wanna have our vector art over here to the left or over here to the right. What we can do is make sure that we have the strip selected. We can come over to layout and we can align the content to the left or the right. And you're gonna notice that that basically shifted the grid area. So instead of it being in the middle like this, now it's over here. So now if I grab this vector art and move it over here to the left side, you're gonna see the editor give you a warning like, hey, don't put it over here. This is not where the section or strip is aligned to. And vice versa, if I align the strip over here to the left and I try to drag this vector art over here to the right, you're gonna see the editor warn you again saying don't put content over here because it won't be on the website on smaller screen sizes. Another great thing that you can do with strips is add columns. So if I go ahead and press layout again and press add column, you're gonna notice now we have two columns. And if I click on one of these columns, you're gonna notice that this column has its own set of grid lines. And once again, if we click on this column, press layout, we can align this column to the left, right, or center. And if I just select the strip, go into manage columns, we can actually add four different columns to a single strip. And each one of these, of course, has its own set of grid lines inside of it. That, of course, just like I showed before, we can align to the left, right, or center. Now, what you will notice is if I click this section up here, this grid line is very large. We have a lot of space to work with. However, if we add two, three, or even four columns, you're gonna notice that our area to play with design is very limited here. So I would almost say maybe using a max of three columns per row is probably the most you would ever really want to use because this at least gives you enough space to put in some content like a paragraph or something like that. However, if you do four, there was such limited space there that it kind of makes it hard to add a lot of components. Now, if it's purely for design, for pictures, or maybe even a button, then that is perfectly fine. But if you plan to put content inside of these, then I would recommend three max. I would also like to mention, if we come up here to this top section and we add some text, and you just stick it right up against the grid line on smaller screen sizes, you're gonna notice it is basically pushed up right up against the edge of the screen, which you don't really want that. And especially on tablet, it's very visible because on tablet, it will look more like this where it's like really smushed up against it. And you don't really want that. 
Instead, what I would recommend is what I call a 20 pixel rule. So if we put it on the edge of the grid line and I click this element and I hold shift in the right arrow two times, now it is 20 pixels away from the edge. And that is basically the minimum that I would do. So let's, if we shrink down the website, once it stops, you know, getting smaller, you'll see that there is still enough space here for the content to breathe and it's not so smushed up against the edge of the screen. Same rule applies over here to the right side. So if I go ahead and shrink down the screen, you're gonna notice it basically is smushed up right against the screen. However, if we just go ahead and bring it in 20 pixels, and then press preview, then you're gonna notice it looks a lot better right here. And if it's hard for you to remember to continuously bump these over 20 pixels, what you can do is come up to tools and activate rulers. And that's basically gonna have this ruler up here, but as I'm hovering over it, you can see that there's this little plus icon. So if I just go ahead and click right here, you're gonna notice that I just placed a, a ruler right here at the 20 pixel mark. And if I wanted to edit it, we could easily just come over here, make sure that this says 20 or we can delete it. And then what I would do over here is put one right here and you'll notice that I put it at 961. We want it to be exactly 960. So now we just need to make sure that all of our items line up with the ruler. And you'll notice it's also down here as well. And as you can see, it is pretty easy if you use the ruler just to add these little guides right here for you to just place your content against. And it really helps make your website look professional on all screen sizes. But that is basically going to wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and consider subscribing for more Wix and Editor X content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I'll see you on the next one.